Okay. So uh, I do, I do actually for anybody that has been here before and has heard me speak before, I do want to thank everybody for coming back Uh, for anybody that's new. Thanks for coming. Um, Doug, Marianne, again, thank you. This is always, it's always fun to get out and and talk to different groups. Uh, And Google is something that I, I use a lot of, I use Google day in and day out. So I've looked at ways to make this work better for me. I'm going to talk about Google. So Google's got a, a generic name they call Google Workspace. Google Workspace encompasses both the free and paid versions of Google. To make your life confusing, yes, there is a paid version of Google. And if I if I show you something, I will tell you the difference between the paid and the free. Um but everything that I'm going to talk about tonight is specifically available in all versions of Google, paid or free. So Gmail and the associated tools and Google Workspace, the paid version. <coughs> and I do have some allergies, so I'm going to cough a lot tonight. So for me, Google Google is my day-to-day tool. This is what I do with everything. Um, so because of that, I am going to give a, a little bit of an overview of specifically the paid version and the big differences just to get it out of the way. The biggest difference is you can put your domain name on the paid version. That is the, that is one of the absolute biggest differences. Uh, the usage of everything is going to be the same, except that you can brand your paid version. It starts at like six dollars a month. It's it's cheap, um, and for that you actually get a support channel. With the free version, all you get is the online forums. Sometimes that's great. Sometimes it's not. Google has wonderful documentation, but it's not always a hundred percent up to date. Uh, when it is up to date, the documents work great. One of my favorite documents, I'm going to actually give you guys a link to later on. Um, But the support channel is one of the benefits of the paid version. You also get more storage. So, really, that's the big difference. Unless you need to interface um, with Outlook in some fancy formats. That one's getting dated because they just made the announcement that they're pretty much killing off that functionality in the next uh, two years. Uh, what are they so, killing, off again? killing off again? The exchange form uh, functionality. Uh, Microsoft Exchange, uh, most people don't use it. It's a, um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a precursor to, um, to a, that allowed connecting Microsoft Outlook to Google Workspace and getting all the all the free busy on the calendar, basically turning Google Workspace into a Microsoft clone if you if you so desired. Right. Okay. They're killing off the exchange functionality because their new interface on it that already works on Gmail does the same functionality. So we don't need this interface anymore. Um, but It it is still an interface that exists. The storage free Google is 15 gig of storage shared across the Google environment. That being email, calendar, uh, and Google Drive. If you have the paid version, that bumps up to 30 gig on the $6 plan. Okay. Uh, when you go to the higher up plans, um, I believe one plan goes all the way up to five terabytes. I I don't know that one offhand, but I do have a link that we can look at if anybody's interested on those sizes. Okay. If you're in a in an environment that needs this, device management is an available option. It's kind of neat. Uh, it allows it um, the feature I use is it allows me to put uh, preload a bunch of different Wi-Fi connections. So when I go to Doug's house or Doug's house or Marianne's house or or uh, or Mike's house or somebody's office or somebody else's office, 
I can preload all of these so that as soon as I sign into my Google account on my device, all of those connections are available and auto load. And I don't have to ever, ever recreate them. I can wipe out, I can wipe out my phone, re-add my account, and it preloads all of my wireless networks for me. Hmm. For most people, that's not really a feature that they need. So no, not critical to me. Paid paid solution versus versus free. The two biggest things for me is the branding and the support. So let's kind of move past the paid solution and talk Google in general. Google has a lot of services. Uh, If you wait an hour, they will add one and retire two others. Uh, They're going to retire the one that you really like, and they're going to add one that you don't even know what it does. Um, anybody remember Google Plus? Yeah. Anybody, yeah. anybody miss Google, uh, the Google Reader, uh, the the RSS uh, reader that they had? Um, no, not really. Yeah, it, you know, it was it was nice because it worked, and we didn't have to pay for it. Now we have to get Feedly and pay for stuff. So uh, the product announcements, yeah, oh yeah. So Mike Mike dropped in that Google is upgrading their price up not upgrading um raising their price to $7.20 a month if you're on the monthly plan. If you're on the annual plan where you still pay monthly, you're just locked in for a year um you pay $6 a month. So if okay. you've currently got Google Workspace, you already got that email. Uh, that they're going to do it. Mine came out. I think it's set for February. Um, yeah, February, right in front of me. So some of the services, and I'm going to and I'm going to dive into some of these ser- these services and show you some cool stuff as we go. The biggest services is Google Calendar, Contacts, and Drive. These are the biggest add-on services that you're going to use. Personally. I use this to replace iCloud. Um, I do not use iCloud. I do not use uh, 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 an iCloud email address because everything I've got everything in Google already for my per, for my regular work. So I don't have to do. I don't have to use iCloud as my backup for my device. Google backs up all of my contacts for me. Uh, backs up my calendar for me. <laughs> And we're all familiar with Gmail. So I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to pull up the calendar because I want to show you a few things on the calendar here. The slides are mostly to keep me on track. So there's not a lot of slides and I'm going to go completely out of order on the slides because that's just how I seem to uh, bounce from thing to thing on Google calendar you have the ability to create multiple calendars. Uh, this is this we are actually looking at just a free Gmail account here. We're not looking at a paid one. Um, and we have the ability to create multiple calendars. So down here at the bottom, other calendars, we can either create a new calendar or we can subscribe or uh, or connect to other people's calendars. Uh, the reason I want to point out that you can have multiple calendars, each setting can be applied to each calendar. So as I start going through the calendars, uh, you'll see some of the features that you get. So I'm not going to create one because I've already got a bunch. I'm going to look at a specific calendar. Each calendar allows me to set up sharing with individual people or groups of people and allows me to decide what um yeah, yeah uh decides uh lets me decide what kind of connection I want to share with somebody so I'm just going to share it with myself and what I get is I get the option to pick how much data I want to share this is handy if you've got a coworker 
and and you want to share that calendar so that they can see when you're available so that they can schedule something, but that they don't know what you're actually doing. Uh, so that it's really neat. I just I like to use that um, free busy. And then when some if I've shared that with somebody that I'm working on a project, they can see that I've got something blocking out my time from six until eight tonight. And they don't need to know what it is, but they see that I'm busy and that they shouldn't book an event during that time. I can add multiple people. I can also set it where the person can make changes to my events. This is handy when I um, my calendar that I share with uh, with my wife. We can put events on each other's calendar. We can we can actually look at things and we can uh, we can put things on each other's calendar, see what's going on, edit those events. Um, kind of a kind of a handy thing for uh, for cases where you might want to do that. But a few things that I want to point out uh, down here. Where did it go to? Uh, down down here, you have the ability to edit your default notifications. Notifications can also be configured per calendar. And I, I see two comments about Google Voice. I love Google Voice, so I will talk about that in a little while. On your on your on your calendar, you have the ability to decide whether you want emails for every event change on your calendar. Personally, I find that can be uh, a little annoying if you if you have a lot of events that people will change. But and a lot of times you don't really need them because you can see multiple calendars all at once. <coughs> there are public sharing options and things like that. Now, I'm going to bring over another calendar from uh, from another account. Because I want to show you where there is a little difference on the paid version. On the paid version. Sorry, settings. On the paid version, we get the ability to do extra time zones. Most of the time, that's not really a necessary thing. We also get the ability to. Uh, down here. Um we get some extra view options for our calendar instead of just a standard week or month view. We get some options to uh, fine tune how we want to view it. Not really worth paying just for those fine tuned views, but the working hours working hours is really a neat feature because it does integrate with Google voice. When you use this feature, I have mindset that's that Google Voice follows my working hours and looks at looks at it and says, okay, the phone will ring between nine and six Monday through Friday and 10 to five on Saturday. And that's it. Google Voice is a voice over IP free solution if you use a Gmail address. If you use a paid address, it is a paid solution. You cannot connect the free Google Voice to a paid Google Workspace account. They changed that a couple of years ago. Um, if you have a Google Workspace account and you have Google Voice in there, you cannot convert it to a free one. If you have a free one, you cannot convert it to a Google Workspace one. They haven't figured that part out yet. Mm. But that just counts for Google Voice, right? Correct, for Google Voice. Because every once in a while, I get a little notice from Google that says, do you want to use our workspace? And I'm in it. <laughs> and I think they want to charge me $6 a month. Well, so the works the workspace term has gotten confusing because, again, Google Workspace is Google's generic term for all of their tools. And it's also their branding for their actual paid service right it, it it's one thing that they have done that has definitely made life a little frustrating for the end user mm -hmm. because 
oh, well, I'm using Google Workspace. Well, but are you paying for it? No. Okay, then no, you can't put your domain name on it. Oh, I'm I'm using Gmail. Well, but are you paying for it? Yes. Well, then yes, you can put your domain name on it because it's actually. So it's it is a little confusing for the end user. Um, um, other things that we get in here is we do get the ability to set working locations okay. um, if you're using the paid the paid solution. One thing that I do recommend is if you're using the paid version, set the invitations to not add them to your calendar until you respond to it in email. There is a spam that goes around people sending you spam invites with weird attachments that automatically uh, go up, show up on your calendar. In the paid version, you can say, when I respond uh, to the invitation, add it instead of from everyone. Okay. It'll cut down on spam on your calendar. Uh, now I'm going to, I am going to come over here just to show you the sharing. Uh, to, 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 to. So I am actually in general settings. Uh, on the calendar, you can share it with multiple people, and just and set that up. <laughs> now, when you've got these multiple calendars, you can subscribe to RSS calendars. Um, when Meetup is working correctly, they actually have an RSS calendar or an iCal version that allows you to subscribe to events for a specific group. It's not currently working. Meetup, uh, Meetup's RSS feeds are offline currently. Uh, but when it is working, it's a great feature to actually know what's coming up on, on the different groups instead of having to rely on Meetup's emails. Now, you notice on here I have multiple calendars. I actually use these for a different for a different purpose. You've probably heard me talk about at some point automating my social media. I actually automate my social media through my Google Calendar with if this then that. So, when you come in here creating events, one of the one of the features that's that is native yeah. is they've added, they've integrated it so the Google Meet is an automatic option. If you have a paid account, Google Meet is helpful. If you have a free account, Google Meet is next to useless. It just next to useless because you get uh, you won't, you get a very short time frame. You don't get a lot of the tools. I'm going to pause for a question if anybody wants to throw one out while I take a breath here. Okay. Do you Another know feat Yeah. It, Go ahead. Going back to the demise of the Exchange interface. Yes. Microsoft Exchange. So what about a client that is dyed in the wool and love with their Outlook to manage their emails? Can you still attach the Outlook Yes. Uh, client? Yes, it is okay. called. Uh, uh, I believe it is called. There we go. <clears throat> Google Workspace Sync for Outlook. Excellent. That is the Thank tool. You. That is a tool that will do it. Uh, it, it works. Uh, Limitations being that Outlook is what it is um, and that it's uh, 100% compatible with itself sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, from experience, adding multiple accounts to a Google account, uh, to an Outlook profile that's running uh, this workspace sync does work. But does get a little uh, a little squirrely sometimes, uh, in particular if you're using AT and T email. 
uh, that one seems to be the one that acts up the most. AT&T email, it's, there's not a lot of people on that still, are there? Um, if there's anybody on it, that's too many. Um, because it's it's actually provided by Yahoo, which is kind of funny since Yahoo is owned by Verizon. Uh, so the fact that AT&T pays Verizon to use their email, but um, I might be more easily amused than others because I'm the one that has to fight with the email. <laughs> so I used to work at AT&T and actually every AT&T user has an AT&T email if they choose to use it. Like I have one, I have never used it, but you have what you, if you have an AT&T account, you have an AT&T email. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, and I, I, I don't recommend using email from your ISP ever um, because eventually you're going to move and, and go to a different ISP and that email is going to die. Yeah. Comcast. So I, I don't recommend it. And I definitely don't recommend doing it for business purposes. Um, but that's a, that's a whole different soapbox of mine. Um, when you're creating events, there is an option to create what's called a speedy event. I love these. What it does is it it turns a fi- it makes a 15 minute event into a 10 minute event. A 30 becomes 20. Uh, I think a 30 becomes 25 and a uh, and an hour becomes 50. So it just kind of trims it back a little bit, giving you a little a little reprieve from the uh, the everyday. Uh, that is a setting in here to do these speedy meetings. Uh, <coughs> Uh, whoops, sorry, it's up here. Uh, when you when you are up here, you have the the option to do speedy meetings, and to choose how long you want your meeting to default to. I recommend speedy meetings. I absolutely. Uh, when you're when you're doing this, uh, making life easy, there is a more options. Put your Zoom links right in this ad location. It makes it so easy to join an event. So easy to join an event. You put your Zoom link right in here. Um, when you share it, it does interface with your contacts, allows you to uh, uh, show their calendar if you're if they've shared it with you and determine what permissions you want them to have when they get the event. Uh, I think I've beat the calendar to death. Uh, calendar is great. You can add events, do what you need to do with events. Everything in Google is accessed from what I like to call the tic-tac-toe board. These nine dots up in the corner that everybody looks at and doesn't know what to call it. So I've always called it the tic-tac-toe board. Everything is on here. Gmail, calendar, drive, everything. Uh, if they add a new service, um, It'll come down here and you'll have an option to get to it. I'm going to pop around a little bit. Groups is something that uh, that you have the ability to use on the free version. Under the business version, you can turn it into a distribution list. So you can set it up that that... I, I use I use it for uh, for a variety of purposes, but it's a distribution list. I can have multiple addresses in there that that'll receive the message sent to it. Um, I actually just use it uh, because there's a limit to aliases on regular paid accounts. I believe you get 30 aliases for a user account. Um, and then you get I think it's a thousand groups with 30 aliases per group. So you can really get a lot of email addresses in there without using a catch-all address all for that $6 a month. Why would you want to use a catch-all? Uh, sorry, what's the question about a catch-all? Why oh, not? I, think I, I, I just figured it out. Yeah, but go ahead and answer that. Yeah. Uh, so a catch-all address allows anybody to put any random gibberish before the, uh, the at symbol on your email address. 
And because of that, those spammers will find the randomest of randoms. Um, and you will end up with the randomest of stuff that you don't want to don't want to see unless you uh, you just don't want to see it. I mean, the stuff that comes in is weird. Um, wow. Think about somebody that has a Juno.com address and the type of email that they're getting. Well, that's what you get when you have that random catch all address enabled. Um, both free and paid versions of Google give you disposable addresses. I love these. Um, I'm going to make this bigger so everybody can see it. So if my if my address is my name at gmail.com, well, I can actually just add a plus and a cup and a couple of things on here. Uh we'll see you soon, Marianne. Um, watch the video. There's a lot more to come. I will. I will. Thank uh, you so much. I absolutely. Um, if I add a plus symbol and a couple and um and something after it, I have now created a disposable address. Think about it like this. One, two, three might not make sense, but anybody have a Citibank credit card? You've created a one-off address specifically for Citibank. Then if Citibank, if um, if you get email to that address, you know that Citibank either had a data breach or shared your information. You think about the power of that. Um, Eagle's not here to tell us the joy of, um, of um, the service that he uses. Uh, which works very similar to this. Um, but I use these addresses all the time, these these one-off addresses to track and manage different things. Uh, that way I know if somebody's had a breach. Um, and then I can easily just go in and create a filter that says, no, any email to this, it's gone. The Google Waffle. De Dev Dev's Google Google uh, Google Foo is working tonight. Uh, I knew there was a reason we invited you tonight, right, Dev? Uh, so I love you, these disposable addresses. Could you explain that in more depth? How are you using that address that somebody's? It, it, do you set up everything at Citibank with that email address? Yeah, when I go to Citibank and they say, "What's your email address?" I tell them it's it's it's. Uh, X plus city, or in my case, because Citibank does not accept the plus. Um, so I have a secondary solution that I do use. Um, Citibank doesn't accept the plus. So I actually have a group. Um, and my, and my group, my group is, um, is, um, I, I think it's finance underscore something like that. Uh, at my domain. And then what I do is I create an alias of that that is uh, something something like that um, uh, at my at my domain. But I always try to use something plus to create my aliases. And in case they actually have somebody that knows what they're doing. Usually this first half is actually an alias of a group, <laughs> but that's just me going down a rabbit hole. Um, but under, under my finance group, I will, I will have, um, I will have some, something at, and then under, under something at, it'll be something plus that I that I actually create as the uh, the one off. So you could nest these things. You can create one offs of aliases, one offs of primary addresses, and one offs of groups. And with the exception of doing it on the group, um, and and doing it on the aliases, even on the free version of Google, you can actually just do this top piece. But on the free version, that's actually a different email address um, to other solutions. But Google still sees it as the same address. 
So you can actually use that and and it's still going to show up there. That's 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 how easy it is to create one offset Google. So you can actually come in here. They say I have never tried it. They say you can put a period and put something. I've never tried that one. But these one offs are so are so easy to trim back the amount of spam. Because when I start talking about the filters that I use, you'll see how the how how I actually filter things to track spam and to uh, and to manage my inbox. Eric, why the plus? Is that special? So there's two things about the plus. One, um, and here here's where we're gonna go techie. In the RFC for email, the plus is an accepted character. No matter what the other services tell you, it is a 100% accepted character. Now, realistically, there are some poorly coded email solutions. Uh, sorry, not email solutions. There are some poorly coded websites out there and, and utilities that doctor's offices and banks use that don't recognize that it is a valid character. But in the case of Google, um, adding the plus just says, oh, add this random randomness to an email address. Um, and we're still going to deliver it to the actual email, but we've got this extra identifier. Okay, thanks. Yes. I use it a lot. Uh, it's great. I'm going to really quickly bump through this because you guys are more interested in, in this next part. The Workspace Core Services, and by Workspace, I mean free or paid, includes Meet, uh, uh, Google Meet, formerly known as Hangouts, Google Chat, uh, which if you're using uh, Google Fi, I understand Google Chat is is basically the text message version of that. Um, Jamboard is their name for their whiteboard service. Uh, Keep, I'm not a fan. Um, it does work, but it's very limited note-taking application. I put Google Sites on here, but imagine the Ghostbusters symbol over this. Um, just... All day long, imagine the Ghostbusters symbol over this thing. Google sites are terrible. They're they're hard to work with. They're hard to they're they're ugly. Um, even the good looking ones are ugly. <laughs> uh, and tasks, I find tasks is somewhat limited when you want to do something fancy with a um, with a recurrence. But for basic tasks, it works. It works quite well, and it's available right on the sidebar. And that is that is a really cool feature to me is the fact that the stuff is here on the sidebar that I can just pop into calendar, keep tasks all right here on the sidebar. And like I said, tasks they work. They work. They're good. Uh. But depending upon how fancy of something you need to do, it may not be the best option. Uh, same thing with Keep. Um, I, I personally, I'm liking Notion as my note-taking uh, tool. But Google Contacts and Google Calendar, I can't beat them. There, I have not found a free solution that integrates so well. I think DK is poking at me because I like to say I and me. Um, so here, I, so for anybody that hasn't heard me talk before, I I will tell you the greatest things about stuff that I use, and if it's not something I use, I'll t I'll tell you uh, I'll tell you if I don't like it, but I won't but I won't tell you that it's garbage because I don't I don't use it. I just tell you I don't use it. I can't give you an informed opinion. So. <clears throat> Gmail, because this is where 99% of us spend way too much time. And this is something that we can all 
easily make some adjustments to that will get us massively less um, frustrated. <clears throat> so I'm going to pretty much ignore the slides here and I'm just going to come into Google and I'm going to, and I'm going to show you some stuff here in Gmail that you can do uh, because I'm going to do things in the order of the tabs in the system and not the order of my slides. So when you hit the settings and do see all settings, we come we come up with the magic page uh, that gives us so so much on our settings. The absolute first thing I always do is fix what I like to call the "oh crap, I didn't mean to send that" feature. It defaults to five seconds, but you have a, an option to set it to thirty. Um, thirty makes life so much easier when you're like, ah, I forgot that attachment. Ah, I really shouldn't have typed that. Oh, I should have added the other 13 people to that list instead of just the one. I always set this to 30. Personal preference, 15 might be enough for you. I like 30. I also take the maximum image uh, page size all the way up to 100. I find 25 just isn't enough. Those two I like right off the bat couple other changes I make. These are my personal. These two are our uh, personal preferences because of the way I work. But I defaulted to reply all. Because when I when I'm create when I'm doing a message uh, and I'm just going to open up a new one so that I don't lose that. If if I'm replying to if I'm replying to a message. I want that reply all to be down here. Um. I just absolutely want a reply all option. I don't want to have to work hard to go looking for it. Uh, now, the other thing I like is I also like having, well, this one's not in my inbox. Uh, so let me put, let me just put it in my inbox. The other one that I really like having is the send and archive. Because to me, I don't I I like to file things and get them out of my inbox. I I always want them out of my inbox. You notice on this account the inbox is empty, but I actually have messages in other places. So I always show the send and archive button. These are things that I really like. Um, not everybody likes send an archive. <clears throat> are, you, are you an inbox zero kind of guy? Is that what you're saying? Um, <laughs> I I like to I like my inbox organized. Um, I I wouldn't call it an inbox zero, but what I do is I do a lot with my filters, so that when I, when I get that that email that says somebody updated their privacy policy. That doesn't show up in my inbox. That shows up in a subfolder that I'll manage when I'm at my desk. But when I get that email from uh, from you saying, "Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log in ten minutes early tonight so that you can so that you can get in and test everything," that shows up in my inbox. And because of that, the the excess that excess noise is no longer in my inbox, and I can find and manage the important stuff a lot better. Uh, so, and I'm going to show you guys filters. Filters are the coolest thing. Um, they are one of the best features about Google. It is the reason I switched from a Yahoo account to a Gmail account years ago was specifically for the filters. This line right here. I recommend this on both your mobile device and your computer. Turn off the auto download of external images. That cuts out the tracking pixels. That cuts out uh, potential uh, potential problems for images that uh, uh, that you don't want. It also speeds up the, the use of your email on your phone when you're on a terrible connection. But for me, it's the tracking pixels. 
otherwise down here there is one there's another section I like to adjust. I like to adjust the stars that I use to ones that work well for me. The default is just the yellow star. There's a lot of different choices. I personally use checkboxes and exclamations and things to tell me the step when I'm following through of what that actually means. If it's an informational thing that I need to check back on, if it's a task that I completed, a question I've got for somebody, whatever it might be. By default, uh, Gmail wants to grow up to be Outlook Express and become the uh, spam, the uh, send everybody spam capital uh, of uh, of online email. So they, by default, save every contact. Whenever you communicate with somebody, they save that address. Where that becomes a problem is uh, is later on when you turn on your vacation responder and tell it to send to people that you know. Only people in my contacts. Well, but if every person that you respond to automatically gets added to your contacts, that's basically everybody. So you're now telling people that you're on vacation where you went. Okay, fine. But how many of these newsletters, the the uh, the advertisement from the local grocery store really needs a response to know that you're on vacation? Or the spammer that's, te- that's trying to send you a phishing attempt to gain access to your account doesn't need to know you're on vacation either. I always set this to say, I will add my own contacts. Those are the big things on this page. <clears throat> Those themselves will make life really, really a lot easier with the, oh, no, I didn't mean to. But a few other features I really like in here is the label functionality. I go, uh, that's one of the first things I do is I turn it on that uh, that drafts, spam, and scheduled are set to show if unread. So if I've got anything in one of those three folders, it'll show up on the side. Otherwise, it won't. It'll be under more, um, but they'll pop up automatically if I've got something unread in one of those mailboxes. I also make sure that I turn on all mail to show. Because if I don't, uh, I lose out on that easy ability to quickly say, show me all my messages. Because Google does not use folders. They use labels. You can create and add your own labels. Uh, In the notes that I send out, um, if you import the filters, the filters are going to create these labels down here because these are labels that I use um, f- specifically to mark things as, uh, well, it's not all not all the labels, uh, specifically the filtering and the security. <clears throat> I actually have labels set up and filters that go through and look for different attachment types so that I can easily, at a glance, come through and find all my calendar calendar invites and delete all the old ones. Uh, thanks for coming, Andre. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. Andre. Uh, inbox, the other thing I really like to do to trim this back, I turn off these other labels. I don't like having those tabs across the top. It makes it too easy for me to miss email. So I turn these off the top. For people that are Outlook users, there is a reading pane option. If you really want to be able to read your have read your email without opening a message and, and switching back and forth, you can turn it on. But this is a neat feature. This allows you to manage your email better. We can check email from other accounts. Excuse me. So when you think about that, that AOL, that Hotmail, that Yahoo, um, all those garbage little accounts that we all end up gathering over time, we can have one mailbox that we check all of them from and 
we can actually set it up so that we send email from those addresses as well, if we so desire. Or if we're trying to migrate everybody over to Gmail, we can read the messages up to five, up to five accounts can be connected here. And then you can reply from whatever address you want. If you have multiple accounts connected or multiple send mail as the way there's an option down here that says send email from the account that received it. So let me show you what that looks like here. When you've got all these, when you've got all the different mailboxes, the the uh, send mail as. There's a reply option down here. Oops, sorry about that. Reply from the same address the message was sent to. Um, really nice when you're when you're using the alias feature, and having multiple addresses on the same account. So filters, filters is filters is worth the cost of admission for uh, for any movie this this day um, in this day and age. Uh, this is a feature that Google gives us that is just really really kind of cool. I'm going to start with just a simple filter. Uh, simply simple filter. Ha- um, has the words is uh, is what you're searching for has attachment and then apply a label that's all it does that's a that's the simplest filter out there it applies a label so any pdf um attachment is going to be labeled as having a pdf attachment and is going to be left in my inbox so it whoops, hold on. Let me do it under here under all mail. It'll show that I've got a PDF attachment and it'll just it'll leave it in my inbox. Very simple filter. And then that way when I go to reply to that message, if I do the send and archive, it'll put it into that folder. So that I can come back later and look at that folder and say, ah. There's all the messages that are in that folder, that label from that person. So on the most basic level, you can do just something simple. But then you can bump it up and say, well, no, you know what? I'm looking for all media files. The or has to be capitalized. But as I go through, it's looking for all these different extension types uh, as that has words and that has attachment and labels it as media. Still leaves it in the inbox. So you can start you can start from simple going on up, but then you can re- then you can actually bump even higher. Um, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna pull this one up and show you how it can really start to work. This filter, you notice the, the blue on the parentheses here. So if we if we were to take this down, there's two fil- there's basically two su- two things going on in here. From any of these different addresses, Google Plus is in parentheses because it would throw it off. WordPress.com doesn't need to be because it, it just works. From any of these addresses and not um, any of these subjects. So as it goes through, it could be this subject or this one. But... I also get the option to do larger subjects, subscription and renewal or receipt. So it could be subscription, renewal, subscription, receipt. Either one of those 
if those two words line up together and um and it's from here it'll actually not be put in it'll actually not be flagged so it, it, you get some real options as you start digging into this and this is a this is a simple one this is just what this one does anything that's a social network any notifications from meetup twitter facebook etc kind of all get flagged put into social networks they're not in my inbox. They're in a folder that I'll look at later on. Hence the skip the inbox. But this one, and I and I know I'm gonna I should be sending you both of these. This type of filter, start to remember your algebra days. Um, because we're just nesting stuff in here. This catches I'd say about 95% of security related emails. Oh, verify your account. Here's updated terms of service. Here's an updated privacy policy. You enabled two factor. You at, you you did you turned it on. Uh it just it's a massive massive setup. So uh for instance Break this down. I won't go too deep into it. This this is just all looking at subjects. And this one right here will add a single word plus one of the other three. Uh, But when you start to do it, you'll notice sometimes, sometimes the not should be a minus. Sometimes it should be the word not. Um, it kind of depends if it's inside or outside of the parentheses. So when you start to when you start to work on these filters, you start to look at these search operators that Google gives us. Uh, the search operators are listed in uh, the link for this is listed in the notes. But we get the ability to search by a variety of things. We can search to from uh, CC, uh, but we can even start looking for uh, words near each other. Um, different types of different types of things. I mean, if we're looking at specifically Google Drive documents or something like that. Uh, but the one that I really like is the section right here where we can look for things in a certain time frame. This is really cool for digging out old messages when you've got a mailbox that uh, um, you've got a user that, that likes to keep everything in their inbox. And they've been using this email for uh, for long enough that they've, they've got 29 gig of, of their 30 gig of storage occupied. Uh, you can find those emails that are more than more than five years old and archive them, and then their connection to Thunderbird will work a little better. So these are these are really kind of cool. Um, these uh, these search operators you can use these in filters and in other uh, places. <clears throat> if you were to build a filter. After you've received the email, they do leave an option to apply the the filter to the emails you've already received. So that is that is an option. So let me pop back over here because I know I just ran through a lot of info. <laughs> um, the send as function really kind of cool if you're using aliases if you are using the multiple accounts. Labels can be color coded. Forgot about that. Labels can be color coded. You click on the three dots and you get the option to set different colors for your labels. Uh, there are a couple other features in here. I'll hit real quick. Filters can be imported. 
So when I set, when I give you guys an XML file, you can actually just import it right here. You don't have to retype them. Please don't retype them. It's too hard. Um, over over here, chat and meet. You can turn the stuff off so that you don't have the uh, the annoying icons if you don't use the features. But under advanced, this is a feature that I do use. I always turn on templates and the unread message icon. Because templates, let me see if I've got a template on this one here. Yep, okay, good. So a template, I have the option to actually have something that's pre-typed uh, that I that I can actually say, you know what, drop that in, and and fine tune it. Used to be called canned responses, but it's really a neat feature. So I always I always make sure that I turn on the templates. They don't do it by default because it's technically a beta feature. Uh, but I've been using it for ten years. Google uh, Google uh, domains. Uh, came out of beta just before they get before they sold it to uh, Squarespace. Um, so I mean, it was it was a matter of a, a, like a month that it was out of beta before they actually sold it. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> like hey, I said, I the quick- slides are to keep me on track. Can I ask a quick question there, uh, yeah. Eric? On yeah. that last um, screen, and I I made the changes that you did it, but at the bottom it says save changes, but that isn't highlighted. I'm not able to save the changes. I enabled the templates and enabled the unread. Oh, okay. Does okay, that hold make on. a difference? Uh, hold on. Let me pop in this one. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay. Um, if you, if you can't, if you can't click save changes, I would reload the, I would reload this page, um, and then make, and then make the adjustments. All right. Because it should, th- this is one that should force you to save. There are some that you don't have to actually save it. They just automatically apply. Um, okay. but on this page, it should, um, you should have to click save. All right, thanks. Yep. Uh, oh, signatures. Um, I will actually bring up this other one because it's easier to show you. But on signatures, I'll clear this. Let me clear this out. On signatures, as you change the address, you can have multiple signatures, one for each. You can have a different signature for each email address. And you can determine when you want that signature to fire. So if you want that signature to fire, uh, what you want on new emails and on replies, you can actually set that up. Uh, Absolutely. You can have multiple signatures in there. And you can have other signatures that are, that you're not actually using that you've just created signatures that you can just apply to a message. Uh, if you've got uh, something that you like to apply when you've got a new contact, a new uh, uh, contact or something. Okay, so Google Google Groups for Business. I'm going to pull this one up so I can show you. Because when you have the business version, it uh, you do get some extra functionality. <coughs> one of the first things I always do is I always create an address of host mass of sorry abuse and postmaster. Google has them and monitors those. Uh, but if you create the group and add yourself as a member, you'll get a copy of those messages. It's always nice to know if somebody's got some kind of problem and they're trying to reach out to you and um, and they don't know how to actually get in touch and they use these. 
I don't find a lot of people use them. Most people that know these exist don't email anymore. Um, but other, but in these groups, you can set these groups up with uh, with internal members and set how they receive stuff. If they just if they don't need to receive any email, if they just need a digest. Um, so you get the option to really uh, fine tune the distribution list piece of this um, as you're using it. I will say for anybody that wants to know more about Google Workspace, the paid version, if you send me an email, I can send you links. Um, I'm, I know I've talked a little longer than, uh, than I'm probably going to need to, so I'm going to run out of time for uh, the paid stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so just send me an email offline and I can point you in the right direction. Um, uh, the free version, you can only use, uh, you pretty much only use this by going to the URL of groups.google.com. On the paid version, you also have the ability to use it as a collaborative mailbox and and do it um, do it that way. Which is kind of cool. <clears throat> Primarily, though, in the paid version, I use it as a distribution list. Like I said, these slides, they're out of order from what I talked about, aren't they? Uh, ah, yes, invitations. When you when you fill when you create an event on Google and you invite somebody, it will automatically send them an email, both free and paid. It'll send them an email. If you're on the paid version um, and you've got DMARC configured, it is fully DMARC compliant. Uh, the messages will get delivered. Um, that used to not be the case. And right inside of the message is a is a quick, easy way for somebody to click yes to accept that mess that event. It'll automatically add it to their calendar. It is it is very hard for them to mess this up. They will mess this up. Um, absolutely, they will have a hard time with this. They will not click on the yes. They'll click on they'll click on no. They'll they'll delete it. Um and this is why I also say put your um, Zoom link in the location field because if they've added it to their calendar, that Zoom link will show right up and they can just click on it uh, and join the event. They don't have to go digging for all the information. So, Eric. Yes. I know this is probably, you know, maybe out of scope, but so I, I guess what I want to say as a Zoom link user, I have the capability of adding my or saving my meetings as a Zoom meeting, and it automatically puts the Zoom link in there for me. Correct. So I don't know if you want it to go there or not. <laughs> Correct. Well, so and and actually, no, that's that is that is a good point. Um, Google Meet um, and and Zoom. Uh, uh, you're welcome, Carla. Thanks for coming. Uh, Google Meet and Zoom both uh, both integrate with the calendar. They both get, and I believe there's other services do, that do as well for the uh, uh, for online meetings. And some of them work better than others for putting the links into the calendar correctly and and doing things correctly. Um. And it and a lot of it depends upon the the user um, capability, uh, the person creating the events, um, and how they work. If it's a uh, if it's a viable solution, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, because I'm working across twelve different Google Workspace accounts, integrating Zoom directly with Workspace didn't work for me. Um. Uh, so I, because I have too many different directions that I go, uh, so it didn't work well for me. So that's why I I mentioned adding it manually. But no, absolutely. If 
that experience works well for you where you can integrate directly with Google. Oh, uh, it makes life super easy for it. It just adds that event, puts everything in the right place, sends stuff, sends notifications. It works great. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and see, this is this is the reason why I like having people show uh, the more people are a group. I, I wouldn't have talked about Google Voice unless somebody mentioned it, because it's not really a core utility that a lot of people know about. Which is unfortunate because it's a really cool feature. Uh, this is a referral link for Google. Um, ignore that. Let me give you a direct link for Google Workspace if you're interested in trying it. This is a direct link for Google Workspace if you're interested in trying it. Uh, and it is it is um, six dollars per month if you sign up for an if you sign up for an annual plan because the price is changing in February where it'll be it'll be seven and change uh, from month to month. Uh, the other resource on this is those search operators that I pulled up. So I do want to thank everybody. I'm, I am here to take questions because I know I did talk fast because I had a lot of stuff. No, DK, you, you're out of questions. You no. Nah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, with regards to Google voice, uh, you used to be able, I used to have like five Google voice numbers that would yes. all make my phone ring and tie them all. But then I think they changed it so you can only have one Google voice uh, number per account. Uh, so the but official the stance on Google voice, um, as, as I know it, is... You can have a single Google Voice account per, uh, okay, so a single free Google Voice account per free Gmail address or Google account that is not tied to a paid workspace account. Now, then the next limitation is you can connect a single Google Voice to a single cell phone uh, if you mark it as a cell phone. If you treat, if you mark your cell phone as a work phone, you can connect two Google Voice accounts to a, a single work phone. Now, if you are resourceful, um, I personally have more than two Google Voice accounts. Uh, and I use a system called the UMA, uh, O O M A. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to find my. Uh, here we go. Um, I use the UMA. It's a voice over IP system, and for uh, similar to a Magic Jack. And what I have is somebody calls my Google Voice, and one Google Voice uh, routes to, uh, sorry, two Google Voice numbers route to a, an UMA number, which then forwards to my cell phone. So I have four UMA numbers allowing me eight Google Voice numbers, plus my cell phone allowing me a total of 10 Google Voice numbers. Okay, that might solve it. Yeah, I'll give you a second on that one. Um, and then just to make life even easier, I, I have it set so that when my Google Voice number rings to my cell phone, um, it displays my Google Voice number instead of the number of the person calling so that each Google Voice number has a distinct ringtone and all other numbers on the on the on that come to the phone are set to silent because nobody has my personal cell number. Everybody uses Google Voice. So every phone that every phone number that will actually ring has different hours and time frames that it'll ring on. Excellent. So let me on a follow up question on this voice. Uh, can you do it over IP, or is it does it require like a cell phone? 
Uh, so uh, Google Voice can be done on a. Uh, I've actually seen people do it, where they laptop. where they'll get a uh, they'll get an iPod Touch, and they will um, they will get a uh, they'll get a disposable phone number long enough long enough to uh, to activate the account, and then they will use the iPod Touch on a uh, on a Wi Fi connection. And they will just have it route directly through the application instead of to a phone number. Okay, so it's prim- primarily designed for cell phones, then. No. Yeah. Well, the idea behind Google Voice was it was it was a it was a free number that you could give out to people, um, and and originally they wanted it to replace your cell phone. Um, it was a way to have a portable number. But they, it was designed, I mean, what I've always used it for is um, as kind of more of a disposable number. Uh, I have one specifically that if I sell something on Craigslist or eBay or whatever, uh, when I sold my car, that was the number that was written in the back window of my car. <laughs> uh, and then once I sold the car, I, I burned that number and, um, and I'll just generate a new one uh, the next time I need to sell a car. But there are there are ways to connect it to SIP phones uh, and to uh, there's actually devices meant uh, as desk phones that will connect to Google Voice. That works the best when you have the paid Google Voice solution, though, for the desk phones, because um, through Google Workspace, it will actually provision the the uh, the desk phone automatically. I I have uh, I know several people that they their uh, their office runs off of Google Voice numbers, and they just they buy they buy phones and provision them through Google Workspace, and it just sets up Google works Google Voice numbers for everybody. All right, thank you. Yeah. I use mine on my lap my Google Voice on my laptop. So if you have it to where you can do the VoIP on your laptop you can do, use it on your laptop yeah there's a there's a lot of ways to set it up uh because it's it's been around a long time um it used to be called uh, ring central and you had to get an invitation to get into it uh and now ring central still is a name that's out there but it's being used for a different service um at one point i think google voice was called um uh, Grand Central, I think, is the um, is one of the names that went by. Um, but early on, it was invite only, and sometimes you could find somebody that might have had an invite that you could get from them. Um, but in the early days, it was painful to get. Now, as long as you've got a Google account, you can go set one up right now, except your Google Workspace account. That one you have to pay for. Hey, hey Eric, I got a, just a question on pricing. Um, yeah. So if I have a client, they, they're they running out of storage space for their email. Let's just say a lot of, a lot of storage space. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so there's a $12 and an $18 I can see on your screen there. Uh, if I had someone that they had, let's say, six domains, and across those domains, they had about 30 email addresses. Um, so is that going to be 30 times $18? No. The- so that's what's cool. Um, the $18 is per user, not per e- um, not per domain. You can put 20 domains in a Google Workspace account. Um, a single user can have 30 aliases. So let, let's, let's, uh, let's well, just say. Well, the, the alias though, they want to be able to send email from, you know, multiple addresses. And that's okay. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay. So let, let's, let's just, we'll just, we'll just call it, uh, we'll call it, we'll call it user, user A has, uh, has eight, um, you said eight domains, eighteen. Yeah, six six domains. Six do, six domains. So and thirty email addresses are going across all six domains. You know, one of them is large. They have like twenty 
email address. Yeah, so let, so let let's let's say um, hmm. uh, let's say user A has uh, is uh, is um, A one is is the user a, uh, address A two hmm. through A six are uh, aliases. Um, so I mean, this could be uh, um, uh, this will be a domain one. Mm-hmm. Uh, at domain two, uh, so that you can have one user. I mean, you can have your thirty users, but they can have six different email addresses under that user account. Right. Okay. They can send from all six addresses, receive at all six addresses, and then let and then let's say, let's say that they're at the uh, the let's say that they're at the twelve dollar plan, two terabytes. Mm-hmm. So you've got you've got thirty uh, you've got thirty uh, thirty users times times two terabytes, uh, so you got your sixty terabytes. But uh, user users one one through twenty eight only only need a total of five terabytes. Mm-hmm. Users twenty nine and thirty have the other. 55 terabytes to split because of that pooled storage that they're now giving us. So you can actually determine some user just, you know, having less as far as uh, uh-huh. storage. Yeah. Okay. You can delimit that. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not, you know, the alias thing. I mean, I understand what aliases are and I use them myself here, but you let me, let me, uh, let me pop it up. But it's, uh, a full, but it's a full email address. You know, they like one person yeah. out of the 30 might have has all six domains, you know, and they want each one individually be able to separate it and be able to send from and, and receive. Yeah, this is taking me just a second to log into uh, password manager. My, I've got my one user. Mm-hmm. And then I've got my all my alias addresses. Right. So I can send I can send from any of these addresses. So now when I come over to my email, uh, hold on, let me let me double check here. Yeah, okay, I can I can do it on I can do it on this one second. When I come into my email and I go to compose, I can send from any one of my aliases. And it'll show up as it's from that address. Right. And it can be on a different domain. Okay. And will it, uh, when it comes into, let's say, that DFWWP, that comes in, it's in a consolidated inbox, though, right? Right. I'm looking at one inbox. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, but that's it's right. See, that's where inbox. I use my filters. Right. I use my filters and say, okay, anything that comes to DFWWP. Um, gets this label here, this blue label, and it could sit in my inbox, or it could go into this folder. Right. Okay. And that that allows me to trim back on what I'm what I'm spending, because you know you got however many of these accounts it, it can really add up. Yeah. Uh, so that that allow <laughs> that allows me to do that, where I can have all the different addresses on all the different things. And on top of that, when I hit my limits, I can actually come over here to my Google Groups, and I can then say, "Well, you know what? These uh, uh, these two email addresses are a group that actually deliver to me." But then I use a a different version of it without that subdomain as my reply address. Because these are my transactional ones that people might want to reply to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Comes in handy for something like uh, Mailchimp. Uh, I'll use a Mailchimp group, uh, and it'll just it'll have my Mailchimp email address, and then uh, it just comes to me. All right. Well, that that's helpful, really. We'll see. We'll see you later, Sharon. Thanks for coming.
Eric, would you ever need more than one email? Um, Maybe. As a seat, you know, to the Google Maybe. Workspace? Why? Maybe. it. De well, it depends. Uh, in, in my case, um, I do have an account that, yes, it does have more than one address in it um because i wanted a second google voice um uh, and i wanted um and i wanted to specifically split things apart but um i'll use the exam i'll use my personal google workspace account as an example um i've got i have my my personal domain in it um my wife has her personal domain in it uh, I have a I have a family domain in it, so she has an account. I have an account, and then I've and then the this other account is actually just used for alias that third domain is used for aliases. But we each have our own account, so that's why I want more than one user in that one. I see. Okay, uh, that makes sense. But but uh, for instance, uh, let let's let's pick on Eagle since he's not here. <laughs> um, um, his WP help desk website. Let's say his WP uh, help desk website is, um, uh, is five people managing this and they all have an email at that, at that domain. Well, obviously then we want five, five mailboxes in that account, uh, for everybody to get their email. So, there are reasons to have multiple mailboxes and then there's reasons to only have one. Uh, if it's just your business in that mailbox, you probably only need the one address uh, and then you use some aliases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if it's, um, I talked to somebody today, they're, um, they're running for office right now. It's just them, but in the future, they're going to have other people that work for them they're going to add mailboxes so that everybody can communicate in the same domain. Okay. Hmm. It's a bit mind boggling, but yes, it, it can, uh, it, it definitely can. And there, there are other features that you can that you start looking at as you start looking at the paid version. There are other pieces in there that are not available on the free end that most of us will never touch. <coughs> but then there are features in there like the anti-spoofing, the DMARC feature, um, which I obviously didn't talk talk about because it's it doesn't it doesn't improve your. Uh, um, how quickly you manage your email it, it doesn't it doesn't help sharing a calendar so it really doesn't make much difference on this event mm -hmm. uh, but d mark good yeah eric is there um also an application to receive all your gmail that works um i use the gmail app on my phone um, I'm as an on your, iOS on your user, desktop, the, on your desktop, let's say, because I, um, I I log into the browser. Yeah. Okay. Um. I uh. I mean, Thunderbird works. Um. Um. I don't know how Thunderbird works with alias addresses. Um. Apple Mail works. I know it does not like alias addresses. Right. Uh. Boy, do I know that one. Um, Outlook works. Um, I'm not an Outlook fan. It doesn't work well with aliases. Uh, I mean, if you if you want to truly leverage the aliases, um, to me, the way I the way I work, I'm an iOS user. I mean, I've got my iPhone, I've got my iPad. I install the Gmail app on my device. Mm -hmm. Because then my signature that I create on the website is the same signature that goes onto my email when I send it from my device. And I also have the ability to send send from all my aliases, see all my labels so that everything's filtered and everything. Uh, so my workflow is 
is almost exactly the same, just on a smaller display. And that makes my life easier. Yeah. It'd, be uh, nice. It'd be nice to be able to use your iOS uh, application on your desktop. <laughs> there's probably a way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think there is, but uh, yeah, I, I, I've been using uh, Apple mail forever, you know, and so I've gotten so used to it and I have, nine email accounts in there and uh yeah. you know, it's all partitioned sorted and all that sort of thing so it's um but i can still i actually have clients that are doing the same kind of thing with apple mail you know as an application and uh-huh. three or four um you know addresses in there that they set up and, and because it's, well, sometimes it's difficult i found that uh, when you're getting into an attachment and things of that nature to actually go to uh, your email in the browser. It's always been difficult in some ways to actually set that as a, as a thing within Apple Mail because Apple Mail- I, I, and, and for me, I have found that for my Apple Mail users, my diehard Apple Mail users, mm-hmm. I just completely avoid aliases. Yeah. I'm like, if you've got to have more than one address, you just have to have multiple mailboxes. Yeah. Uh, and they quickly come to one of two conclusions. I either don't need that many mailboxes mm-hmm. or I'm going to use the website um, to send from those other addresses. Yeah. Uh, because Apple mail has some great features that work, that work well, like the fact that it's stable, um, unlike outlook. Um, but Boy, it does not like aliases. Well, you can do the plus, you know, with uh but, oh well, yeah, that that piece works. No, it's yeah. the uh the sending from the aliases that it doesn't like. Yeah. That's the piece that if anybody ever figures out how to do that, they're gonna make some good money because oh boy, it does not work well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have a quick question. Uh, thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, I've been to a lot of these these uh, screens, and I didn't know what I'm looking at. And you or help explain it. But I did want to ask a couple specific questions here, and that would be spaces. I don't know if you covered that much in chat. I've been playing around with it while we've been talking. Do you have an spaces. opinion about chat uh, spaces? What is spaces? Spaces. I, you know, I'm following you around, getting to the screens you are, and I found spaces in there, and it's an extension to chat where you can actually do voice. You can do a whole. Oh, bunch okay. Of stuff. There's a lot. Uh, you know, DK here. is going to be a better answer of that because I don't. Uh, what, what's um, a better I answer? Don't use Google Chat. What What's a better? Uh, D, DK might have a better answer because I don't use Google Chat. But when I was looking, I found this from Google. I put the link in the chat. You'd learn more. It's it reminds me of Clubhouse. If you know the cell phone app, yeah, yeah, where people are talking back and forth. But you can do voice. You can do, I don't know. You didn't cover it. It's in the Google Workspace. But if uh, you're not familiar, no, no problem, man. Uh, spaces. It's called Spaces. If you go to Gmail, yeah, yeah, and- no, I see it. I see it. Uh oh okay yeah yeah no I I've I have seen this feature um but thought it was I don't use collaboration. Google Chat okay no problem man just curious uh, I mean for me uh, the um if I use if I use any kind of chat functionality I am either using Google Voice um, texting or I am using Signal for uh, texting. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh Uh-huh. I have another question for you, Eric. Yeah. And it has to do when you have a whole list of emails in your inbox and you're in the middle of that list, you've just 
done something with it, you've, you know, s s deleted it or whatever. And when I go back, I would like the next email in line highlighted. Is there any way to do that? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Under advanced, turn on auto advance. Oh, my God. You've made my day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this here because uh, do, do, do. for anybody that's a, that's an Outlook user, um, people are very familiar with. Hey, look at that! I'm reading my message while I've got my list of messages. It's a it is actually a native feature now. And if you want, you can even move it to the bottom if you, uh, if for some reason you'd like to do it down there. But yeah, you can turn on the reading pane and and move that around. <clears throat> yeah, Ash. Yes, <clears throat> when you have all these multiple phone numbers, like for when the one that you sell your car with, right? Uh huh. What happens when somebody tries texting that number? It, uh, uh, let me show you. It just comes in, uh, as a, uh, uh, as a text message. I don't think I have any in here. Uh, it'll just come in as a text message that somebody, that somebody can, uh, that I can reply to back and forth. Let me pull up. A, uh, let me see if I've got something around here that I can pull up. So it does. It does work as for texting yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's full MMS capable. So you can get you can get images. I had somebody text me an image a uh, couple um, couple hours ago. And if you've got the device, if you've got the app on your phone, you can. Uh, um, it interfaces with your count with your with your calendar. Well, that'd be that'd be neat. Um, it interfaces with your camera, so that you can actually take a photo and and send it to somebody. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Google Voice is a great number to use for a business number because when you've got that phone number on your on your website, somebody's going to call that at two o'clock in the morning and wake you up. But if it's Google Voice and you can set your working hours so that it doesn't ring at two o'clock in the morning, isn't that a wonderful thing? Is it is this Google Voice the one where like um it asks you to state your name if you're the caller? It can. Can you turn that off? You can. Yeah, let me uh when I first started using it was for that first, first, time. first time call. And also it would record the call. But that was all before Google Voice came, or before it got merged into their modern. Yeah. So here, here's my Google Voice settings. Uh, so automatically sends messages to my email. Um, uh, uses my phone to place calls. Um, I decide where my devices come in. To come in. Do you but get to say what? Do you get to say what the caller ID looks like on the other end for the person that you're calling? Yes and no. Uh, there are services that allow you to register your phone number um, that are supposed to help deliver it a little bit better. So I've got mine set to screen calls. But under my rules, I have it set that on... Uh, Anybody that's in my contact list, it doesn't screen them. It still announces it to me who the person is, but the it doesn't screen anybody. For somebody that's not in my contact list, it says, "Hey, who are you? Tell me who you are, so that I know." And then I use if it's somebody that I'm going to continue to deal with, I just add them to my contacts, and it never prompts them again. It just lets them through. But I I turned that on. Uh, primarily on my personal Google Voice, because 
I got tired of let me tell let me sell you car insurance, a car warranty, a back brace, um, a Google, um, or whatever else they were trying to sell me that afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> now, on most of my accounts, I have it set to show my Google Voice number as caller ID. Okay. Uh, but I do have the option to set it as anonymous so that it does not show my Google Voice number. It doesn't show any number. It just shows me as an unknown number. Can you? Port but it, it's over, up to you. Yeah. Can you port over an existing number that's associated with another, uh, let's say, mobile provider? Yes. Okay. And you can port Google Voice numbers out to certain locations. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Google Google Voice. I um, if you don't if you don't have an office with a with an actual phone at the office. Google Voice is a great solution for that. And because most of us do work out of our house, uh, Google Voice is like the P.O. Box version of uh, of a telephone. And if you missed the conversation earlier about an address on your website uh, for privacy policies and things, get a P.O. Box. <laughs> get one. And I still say, if your state will let you put your P.O. box on your driver's license, do that, too. <laughs>